Hello, my friends. Um, kind of a, a sad thing to think about whenever you really think about it. If you really think what's happening in the world, and not just in the world, but to those who are of God, um, it, it's a sad pattern that has existed ever since mankind fell, where God always begins in his own house, and his own house by the time he has to begin cleaning it up, doesn't know who he is whenever that point comes along. Um, so they, they go after different gods, they go after different doctrines, they go after different laws, they're persuaded, they're enticed by the world, they soon join it, and by the time they join it, they can't get out of it because they don't even realize that they've gone away from God and join with the world. Uh, we saw Israel do this multiple times in, in throughout history. We've seen it happen today with the Christians uh, when it comes to the, the church that a lot of the church calls itself a church. They, they act like the world would look at a church to act like um, their lips proclaim Jesus Christ uh, most of the time, some of the time, um, but their hearts, they're far, far from him. Um, I've said here for several years that New York City is likened to Sodom. Sodom and Gomorrah is New York City in California. It is Revelation chapter 18. It is the great prostitute who sits on multitudes of waters. Uh, that, that imagery of this city that becomes destroyed in chapter 18 if you look at the imagery, you literally can see the Statue of Liberty. Uh, Mystery Babylon, the horror of the prostitutes. Uh, you literally can see the statue holding a cup of abominable things with a crown on her head. I mean, the imagery is there. The understanding is there. When you look in the world and you see what happens in New York City, it, it doesn't take much to really be able to put this together. And meanwhile, you have the church that should be seeing these things. But because they worship two different gods, they're looking at the wrong place. You have one people, like the, the church that you see all over YouTube, the Rapture Me Now crowd. I can't take it anymore, Lord. Get me out of here, even though I live in comfort. Get me out of here. It's too bad. Those ones, most of them, worship Israel, but they worship the false Israel. They worship the Antichrist version of Israel. They don't worship the true Israel, which they are, because they don't even know that they are them. And again, I've spoken on this many and many of times, and that's the part that's sad whenever you really think about this. They're looking over in physical Israel that sits in the Middle East, the place where, biblically speaking, all of these things happened. They're not, they're, not, they're not at the wrong place when it comes to biblical history. But what they have not understood is that when the law was cut off, when Christ was crucified and the law was cut off, they entered into an age of grace, one which is in the hearts of men, not dealing with any physical law. So they don't recognize that it's in the hearts of the people that you find God's church, his body. They don't realize that what God is fulfilling in the end times, Israel is a part of it, but that's not his focus. And why is physical Israel not God's focus? Because there's very few Christians there. Christians are in the West. In America, you see God's fulfillment, his partial promise to Abraham fulfilled right there in America. But they don't see any of it. They look right past it. The red heifer thing. You know, they find red five red heifers that are potentially able to be used for the ceremony of building the third temple in, in physical Israel. And, and you know, you'll hear, hear these people speak about, well, don't put God in a box. If he wants to, to take red heifers from Texas and fly them over to Israel, God will do that. That's not how God operates. The, the, the thing about the red heifers is it's, it's supposed to be a miracle. If God wanted red heifers 
to be in physical Israel, he would have given physical Israel a red heifer because it's supposed to be, it's supposed to represent God's intervention. Because to have a red heifer, a completely red cow with no more than two entire hairs on its body without blemish, that's a miracle. That's supposed to be directed. That's where your faith goes. They get these five red heifers in Texas and they ship them to Israel. Why does God raise up five red heifers in Texas? It's like raising a billboard. Hey, look here, church. Look here, people who say that you know me and you worship me. I'm giving you five red heifers that you're looking for, that you're looking to fulfill these end times by, by trying to put the hair of a camel through the eye of a needle. You're trying to do all that. Well, I'll give it to you so you can see it. I'll put them right in Texas, right in America, the promised land that I promised to Abraham. So you can see that where God is working is in America, is in the West. But no, they take the red heifers and they ship them over to Israel. And then once again, their eyes all go get fixated on physical Israel, which is the home of the Antichrist. And they're so warped, they cannot see these simple things. That if God is going to perform a miracle, he doesn't need man to put them on a plane and ship them over there. He will raise the miracle where it stands, where he wants it to be. He's not going to have man intervene and ship it along. But they're so warped and they have so little faith, they cannot recognize these very simple truths of reality. So they're looking to Israel and all the end times people. Oh, we just had the Feast of Trumpets, high rapture time, high watch time, the Feast of Trumpets, Feast of Trumpets. What's the next feast? Yom Kippur, what's the next feast? So on and so on, because they're looking to put grace into a box by fulfilling it through law, which Jesus came to tear that apart, to cut it in half. Say, law was the way. It's not anymore. Now it's grace through me. But they all look back to the law as though God is going to fulfill through that law what he has promised to fulfill through grace. So they, they have their eyes fixated on Israel. Meanwhile, they will say, well, in the end times, everybody's eyes are going to be fixated on Israel. Go ahead and pull up the New York Times, the Washington Post, the New York Post, Breitbart, Drudge Report. Um, go pull up all the news papers in the world. Go turn on CNN, Fox News, MSNBC. Go turn on all these news networks. You tell me where the focus is of the world. Is it on physical Israel? No, the, the church is fixated on physical Israel because they worship two different gods. They're fixated on it. But the world, the world's fixated on America. It's fixated on Russia. That great land from the north, the great bear that comes to lay waste to Israel. Guess who Israel is in the time of the end? Is all eyes on that physical little strip of land that's over there in the Middle East? No, Russia's eyes are on America because America is Israel. And her people don't realize it. Her people just don't realize it anymore. They don't. They've sold their birthright to a different God. It's likened to the golden calf. You know, Moses went away for a little while. He comes back and Aaron has everybody gathered worshiping this golden calf. Well, now Jesus went away for a little while. A little while is funny because it's been 2,000 years, but the God a day is 1,000 years, 1,000 years is a day. For, for God, it's a little while. Jesus went away. He said, I will come back to receive my own. But he did go away. So when he's coming back, Scripture repeats time after time after time. It's a pattern. There's nothing new under the sun other than when the Son himself was born into the world. That was new. That was the only new thing that you've ever seen in Scripture. Scripture replays. Different peoples replay it because humanity is in a fallen state stuck to three generations of peoples at any given time in the world. So you have their eyes looking on physical Israel to fulfill all these things that are fulfilling right in their own backyard. And they cannot see it because they, they believe in two different gods. Jesus went away for a little while. Whenever he comes back, he's going to see the church, just like Aaron and the rest of the Israelites, worshiping another god. And it's going to happen because they're all looking to physical Israel as though that's where God is fulfilling things. 
and then God will turn and deal with both physical Israel and them under the same branch because they, rather than be grafted into the branch of grace, for some reason desire nothing more but to go back to the law and fulfill everything through physical Israel. Whenever Jesus is going to fulfill it, how he's going to fulfill it, when he comes back, he comes back like a thief in the night and he gives us all of these different hints as to what the end of the times and the end of the age is going to look like. Go down through Matthew 24, you can check mark every single point that Jesus said. And you go to Revelation 18. And God gives ample warning, not only through his people, the prophets. I've been speaking of this for many of years and I'm nothing. I'm nothing in the kingdom of God. The lowliest, nothing. I get lots of things wrong. I don't know everything. I, I, all I know is that I walk with God. And it's been daily for seven years. I've gotten to know him, which is the one requirement in the end, to get to know him. That's it. He doesn't require anything else. Know him. I know him and that's all that I know. And even I can look at the scriptures in Revelation 17, 18, look at the gospel, look at the prophecies in the Bible, and understand that God is putting all eyes on America, on Russia, because the end is coming. And you'll notice now whenever you look, Russia and China have uh, submarines located on the east and the west coast of America. We don't know where they are, but they're there. We know that. All this talk about nuclear war, New York City... A couple of months ago, going through this thing where they were they were running preparedness ads on TV for how to escape a nuclear explosion or how to survive a nuclear explosion. God giving hint after hint after hint. He's being patient that no man can be patient like. Getting every single last one of his who will see to see this. And maybe by hearing this, somebody listening to me will then understand and be able to see, be, be taken away from all of that doctrinal warping that the false church has gone and done to us, and done to me too. And look at the reality of what's happening in the world. Those nuclear explosion warnings and special messages and broadcasts and giving out bug bags in Denver, these things are all happening because it's a warning of something to come. And what is to come? Revelation 18, when New York City, the whore of Babylon, goes up in smoke forever and ever. Where the vultures are gathered, there you will find the corpse. That's what's coming. And it, you can literally watch it play out in the world. Russia now, we're, we're, we're right there at the verge of a nuclear war with Russia. And you tell this to people and people just brush it off. Oh yeah, whatever. Because people have gotten so bombarded with event after event after event that they've all become numb to them. They don't know. Unless you walk with God, you're numb to everything happening in the world or you're following a different God so you don't know the truth there. The only way to have patience, perseverance, hope, and understanding is to know God at this point in time and he's given you plenty of opportunities to do it. But he's coming like a thief in the night, and whenever he comes, I don't, it, I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's tied to a feast. I don't know if it's tied to a day. I don't know the day or the hour that he's coming, but I know that he's coming when I don't expect him because he said he would. Even though I do expect him because I do expect him, I know he's coming. And how do I know he's coming? Because I see all the events happening in the world that he said would happen. I look at Revelation seventeen eighteen and know that's about ready to happen. I know all of these things. So I'm prepared for it. I'm not walking in darkness. I'm walking in the light. But you can never be actually prepared for this moment that's about to happen. When Christ actually comes back to take those who know him, there is no amount of preparation that any man will ever be able to have that will prepare you exactly for that moment. You will just do it. He will forcefully take you up. That's why it's called a rapture or harpazo. That's a, a fierce grabbing, a strong grabbing. Just like a parent comes and grabs a child who's about to run on the street in front of a car. That's what that moment is like. And what is that moment tied to? Revelation chapter 18. Come out of her, my people, so that you, you do not partake in her sin. That's New York City. We know that it's burnt up like an inferno. We know that Russia and America are basically already at war. 
threats of nuclear war everywhere, specifically in New York City, having public service announcements about it. They're getting ready to build that third Antichrist temple in Jerusalem. All of these things are happening, yet people, what do they say that's in this church with all these rapture dreams? Well, let's look to Israel because that's going to tell us when. Let's look at these feast days. That's going to tell us when God's coming back. And that's why it's sad. Because they don't know him. And they want you not to know him either. So they put you in this thing, this circular voice that I've spoken about before. Where it's just like turning on CNN and watching it and believing everything that they're telling you. Even though proven everything that comes out of their mouth is a lie. That's the same thing that's happening in that church. You know, I, I will talk about the Catholics all the time. They also worship many different gods, Mary being higher than Jesus. They worship the mother because they worship the world. Mary represents the womb of the world. That's what they worship. They worship the building more than the one who built the building. And I, I, I can talk all day about them like that. But you know what the one thing most Catholics don't do? Most of them aren't looking over there to Israel and are fixated on what the Jews are doing. Because most of them do understand at least that that is not God's people. God's people come through Jesus Christ. They rejected him. They cut him off. He'll come back for them and for everybody else during times of great, great troubles. Everybody will get another chance at it. But it's totally different than right now. And right now, the only thing there is, is to know Jesus Christ crucified and risen, and that he's coming back to gather those who are his, all those that know him. Many in that day will say, but Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? Did we not do all of these deeds and great works? And the Lord will say, I never knew you. Because that's what this church has fallen into. They've lulled into a sleep of looking at all of these signs in the skies and, and constellations and red heifers and, and uh, Israel and the Jews and all these other things. They're looking at all those other things, trying to put the hair of a camel through the eye of a needle by trying to fulfill grace through the law that was cut off. So where all eyes are at right now are right here. In the West, we know that New York City, based off the description of Revelation 17 and her deeds, we know that Revelation 18 is talking about New York City, and we know that there's about to be a nuclear war, all happening right there in that same line. So where's the eyes at for me? Well, because I know the Lord, I know when my deliverance is coming, even if I don't know when it's coming, which I don't, but I know that it's going to come. And I know that it has to be soon because all of these things are happening at just the right time to fulfill all of the scripture the same exact way that Jesus in three and a half years fulfilled it about himself. There's only a small window of time there and we're in that window and there's no getting out of it. It is now. It is coming. Do you know him or not? Are you trying to cut out grace and, and, and replace it with law? Or do you just know the Lord and you know that whenever he comes, you're not going to prepare, be prepared for it. But you're already in the ark right now and you just don't know it. All those who know the Lord are already in the ark. We're already right beside him. We just don't realize it. And we won't until he opens our eyes to it. This Revelation 18 fulfillment come out of her, my people. That is whenever the removal of God's people comes. We do not partake in the world's sins. We're saved by grace. That is the rapture. Spoken of this many of times. It can fit that scripture in like a glove to all the other scriptures that line up with it. And what is that trigger? What is that event? New York City going up in smoke. And look at what has happened over the last two years to put New York City in that position just perfectly ready for the scriptures to be fulfilled. God bless.